Greetings students and welcome back to another video on partial differential equations. In the last couple of videos we introduced the wave equation and derived its general solution. Today though we're going to solve a wave equation problem using D'Alembert's method. And yes, D'Alembert does in fact refer to the Dallas Maverick superstar and future NBA Hall of Famer Samuel D'Alembert. Okay, fine, that's not actually true. D'Alembert was just some French guy from the 1700s. Anyway, D'Alembert's solution is a solution to a wave equation problem in an infinite one-dimensional domain. In other words, x varies from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, because we have an infinite spatial domain, there won't really be any explicitly specified boundary conditions. However, we will still have two initial conditions because of the two derivatives in time. So let's suppose that our initial conditions are the most generic ones possible. At time zero, our function u is just some arbitrary initial displacement u naught of x, and at time zero, our du dt is just an arbitrary initial velocity v naught of x. In this lecture, we're going to solve this whole PDE problem and find the solution u for an infinite spatial domain with these two initial conditions. So let's begin. We know from the last few videos that our general solution to the wave equation is some function of x plus ct added to some other function of x minus ct. I'm going to label this general solution equation 1. I didn't mention this in the previous videos, but I thought I should shed some light on the physical meaning of this general solution this time around. Suppose I choose a fixed point on the function f. Say I pick f of 0 as my fixed point. By fixed point, I mean a fixed argument, so a fixed x plus ct. In that case, for the argument inside the f to always be 0, I'll need x equal to negative ct. So as time increases, the horizontal position of the fixed point f of 0 will go backwards. And since f of 0 has a fixed value, what's happening is that a point of fixed value is essentially moving backwards in space. In fact, all the other points like f of 1, f of 2, and f of negative 1, and so on, are also moving backwards at the same rate. And this is why f of x plus ct represents a backwards traveling wave. I could make a similar argument for g. If I pick a fixed point on the function g, say at g of 0, then for the argument of g to always be 0, I will need x equals to ct. And this represents a forward traveling wave. So the general solution to the wave equation is just a backwards traveling wave superposed with a forwards traveling wave. Anyway, let's get back to the D'Alembert solution. Now recall that f and g are arbitrary functions which change depending on the particular wave equation problem we're looking at. We don't know what f and g are, so right now f and g are unknowns that we have to solve for. But how do we get from this general solution with the unknown f and g to the solution to an infinite domain wave equation with these initial conditions? Simple, we just substitute our initial conditions and solve for the unknown functions f and g in terms of the known functions u0 and v0 from the initial conditions. So let's start our substitutions. We know that at t equals 0, u is just u0 of x, which means that u0 of x is just f of x plus c times 0 plus g of x minus c times 0. Therefore, that means u0 of x is just the sum of f of x and g of x. I'll call this equation 2. Let's now apply the other initial condition. At t equals 0, the partial of u with respect to t is v0 of x. But first we'll need to find the partial of u with respect to t. The partial of u with respect to t can just be found from a simple application of the chain rule. We'll have the derivative of f with respect to x plus ct times the derivative of x plus ct with respect to t, which is just c. This is going to be added to the derivative of g with respect to x minus ct times the derivative of x minus ct with respect to t, and that's just negative c. Now we apply the second initial condition. At t equals 0, du dt is just v0 of x, which means that after simplifying, v0 of x is c times f prime x minus c times g prime x. This I'm going to call equation 3. The next step here is to integrate this equation 3. I'm going to perform a definite integration from some fixed initial point x0. It can really be any initial point, doesn't really matter. 
to a variable horizontal coordinate x. When we do that, when we integrate from x0 to x, these primed functions, f prime and g prime, just become their antiderivative slash non-primed counterparts. And we'll have the integral from x0 to x of v0 of s ds equals c times f of x minus f of x0 minus c of g of x minus g of x0. Note that s here is just a dummy integration variable. Let's move all the constants to the left hand side and leave only f of x and g of x on the right. I'm going to call this guy equation 4. Now equations 2 and 4 are both in terms of the unknown functions f of x and g of x. So what I'm going to do is solve this system of equations, find f of x and g of x in terms of the functions given as our initial conditions u0 and v0, and then I'm going to plug the f of x and g of x into our general solution in equation 1 to finally get the answer to this wave equation problem. First, I'm going to copy paste equation 2 right above equation 4 just for my quick reference. Anyway, let's start by adding equations 2 and 4. When we do that, we'll get u0 of x plus 1 over c times the integral from x0 to x of v0 of s ds plus f of x0 minus g of x0 on the left and 2 times f of x on the right. We can divide by 2 and replace x by x plus ct to get an expression for our backwards traveling wave f of x plus ct. Now let's subtract 2 and 4 to get an expression for g of x. We'll end up with u0 of x minus 1 over c times the integral from x0 to x of v0 of s ds minus f of x0 plus g of x0 equals 2 times g of x. Once again, we're going to divide by 2 and replace the x by x minus ct to get an expression for our forwards traveling wave, g of x minus ct. Now our general solution u, as we mentioned earlier, is the sum of the backwards traveling wave and the forwards traveling wave. So let's add the backwards traveling wave and forwards traveling wave together to get the full solution u of x comma t. And let's substitute in the expressions for f and g. And let's now simplify. We can cancel out the f of x0 and g of x0, so they don't really matter in the end. We can also switch the limits in the second integral expression and make that integral a positive, because the negative sign will come out when you switch the limits in your integral. Let's now use the property of integrals to combine these two integrals and extend the limits. And here's what we'll have as our final answer u of x comma t equals one half of u naught of x plus c t plus u naught of x minus c t plus one over two c times the integral from x minus c t to x plus c t of v naught of s ds, where u naught of x and v naught of x are the initial displacement and initial velocity respectively, which we specified at the start of the problem. So in conclusion, the solution to the wave equation on an infinite domain with the following initial conditions is given by this function u of x and t. This function is called the d'Alembert solution to the wave equation. Anyway, that concludes the lecture. We successfully derived the d'Alembert solution to the wave equation which involved solving an initial value problem. Now before I end, I'd like to thank my patrons Jennifer Heffman and Jacob Soares for donating at the $10 level and $5 level respectively. If you're interested in becoming a patron for my channel, I put a link to my Patreon page in the description and you can support me there if you wish. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Han, signing out.